And it seems to me if we want to build a bridge to a rational world that the better part of humanity can cross, we have to deal with this fact. Now, most of us do our best not to think about death, but, but there's always part of our minds that knows this can't go on forever. We, we, part of us always knows that we're just a doctor's visit away or a, a phone call away from being starkly reminded with, with the fact of our own mortality or of those closest to us. Now, I'm sure many of you in this room have experienced this in some form. You, you, you must know how uncanny it is to suddenly be, be thrown out of the normal course of your life and just be given the, the full-time job of not dying or caring for someone who is. But the, the one thing people tend to realize at moments like this is that they wasted a lot of time when life was normal. It's not just what they it's not just what they did with their time. It's not just that they spent too much time working or, or compulsively checking email. It's, it's that they they cared about the wrong things. They they regret what they cared about. Their their attention was bound up in petty concerns. The year after year when life was normal. And this is a paradox, of course, because we all know this epiphany is coming. I mean, but don't you know this is coming? Don't you know that there's going to come a day when you'll be sick or someone close to you will die and you'll look back on the kinds of things that captured your attention and you'll think, what, what was I doing? You know this and yet if you're like most people, you will spend most of your time in life tacitly presuming you'll live forever. I mean, it's like watching a bad movie for the fourth time. Yeah. Or, or bickering with your spouse. I mean, this, these things only make sense in light of eternity. Because, because even if you live to be a hundred, there's just not that many days in life. So what, what is the point of life? I mean, is, is anything sacred? Does, does, does such a question even make sense? And I think these questions do make sense, and, and there are answers to them. But the answers are not a matter of getting more information. The answer is a change in attitude. There are ways of experiencing life as sacred, okay, without, without believing anything, and certainly without believing anything on insufficient evidence. There are ways to, to really live in the present moment. What, what's the alternative? It is always now. However much you feel you may need to plan for the future, to anticipate it, to mitigate risks, the reality of your life is now. Now, this may sound trite, but it's the truth. It's not quite true as a matter of physics. In fact, there's, there is no now that encompasses the entire universe. You can't talk about an event being simultaneously occurring here and one at the same moment occurring in Andromeda. The, the truth is that now is not even well-defined as a matter of neurology, because we know that inputs to the brain come at different moments and that, that consciousness is, is built upon layers of inputs whose timings have to be different. Our conscious awareness of the present moment is, in some relevant sense, already a memory. But as a matter of conscious experience, the reality of your life is always now. And I think this is a liberating truth about the nature of the human mind. In fact, I think there's probably nothing more important to understand about your mind than that, if you want to be happy in this world. The, the past is a memory. It's a thought arising in the present. The, the future is merely anticipated. It is another thought arising now. Okay, what, what we truly have is this moment and this. And, and we spend most of our lives forgetting this truth repudiating it, fleeing it, overlooking it. And, and the, the horror 
is that we succeed. We, we manage to never really connect with the present moment and find fulfillment there because we are, we are continually hoping to become happy in the future. And the future never arrives. Now, even when we think we're in the present moment, we're, we're in very subtle ways always looking over its shoulder, anticipating what's coming next. We're always solving a problem. And it's possible to simply drop your problem, if only for a moment, and enjoy whatever is true of your life in the present. So, so, so we have a, a very limited view of what's going on. We're sub subjectively unaware of most of what our minds are doing. And yet when we think about what, what matters, what matters is consciousness and its contents. Okay, consciousness is everything. Our experience of the world, the experience of those we care about, is a matter of consciousness and its contents. So, so whatever the origins of consciousness, the, the most important question for us is how can we truly be fulfilled in life? How, how can we create lives that are truly worth living, given that these lives come to an end. We're all in the business of seeking fulfillment and relief from suffering. I mean, this is not to say that we want mere pleasure or the easiest possible life. That, that, you know, much of what we want in life, much of what we want to experience, entails struggle, and many of us learn to enjoy the struggle itself in some measure. You know, any athlete knows that there's certain kinds of pain that are actually pleasurable. You know, if, if the burn of lifting weights was was actually the symptom of a, a disease, it would be intolerable. But because it's it's happening in the context of, of of a strenuous exercise and progress there, most people learn to enjoy it. So so the, the, the conceptual lens through which we view even very intense sensation largely determines how we feel about it. And and this is one of one of the many ways in which our thinking about experience changes the character of, of experience. So the, the frame we put around the present moment is important and largely determines our experience of it. And how we think about death changes depending on whether we're thinking about dying ourselves or about losing the people we love. But whichever side of the coin we take here, death is really an ever-present reality for us. And it is so whether we're thinking about it or not. It's always announcing itself in the background, on the news, in the stories we hear about the lives of others, in our concerns about our own health, in the attention we pay when crossing the street. If you observe yourself, closely, you'll see that you spend a fair amount of energy each day trying not to die. And has long been noted by philosophers and contemplatives and poets, death makes a mockery of almost everything else we spend our lives doing. But contemplating the brevity of life brings some perspective to how we use our attention. It's not so much what we pay attention to, it's the quality of attention. It's how we feel while doing it.